<laughs> Seemed like it's been forever since we uh, since we played. Uh, after that last game, you want to take a little bit of time off, but uh, you know you play. You have a non-conference schedule you go through, um, and that's getting you ready for Big Ten play for us. So excited to get back out on the football field. We're excited to play in front of a, a national, you know, TV audience again, which is a big thing for our program as we kind of move forward. Uh, last year against Nebraska. We played a good game for the majority of the game. We weren't able to finish it. Uh, of course, last time we played them here, uh, you know, big win for our program. So again, it didn't take an awful lot to really get fired up for this for this game. Also, the excitement that goes along with recognizing our Hall of Fame, our inaugural Hall of Fame class, too. Uh, I think three members of our of our you know, that have a direct football tie. And, uh, our, our football team this year, uh, we put, there are ways that our team can can get decals that we put on our helmets. And to honor two of those great players, of course, Red Grain and Dick Buckus. You know, every, you know, offensive players can get decals. When they do something good individually, team-wise, uh, 77 decal on the helmet. Same thing with our defensive players, uh, with Dick Buckus, a 50 decal. So, uh, again, a lot of excitement. Plus, you know, offensively, uh, it's about putting points on the board. Uh, I think we're about as healthy as we've been in a while. Uh, I assume we're going to have just about everybody ready to go, which is a big deal. So, points on the board. And defensively, just for our football team as a whole, as a whole uh, playing harder, being more physical are some of the things that we need to get accomplished. Take a question. Is uh, James Crawford one of those that's going to be available for you this week? Uh, James Crawford will be available this week. Um, you know, arguably, you know, one of, definitely one of our best players on our team. So to be able to add a player like that into the mix is big. And Larry Boyd, one of those healthy players, too. We're, we're hoping. I assume we're going to have him. We'll see, of course, today uh, where everybody is. But uh, uh, we're hoping that we'll have just about everybody ready to go. But Darren Lowe was able to get some plays in last week. Uh, Reggie Corbin has gotten different plays. So we're almost at full speed again. Is Mike Brown going to play football this year? Uh, hope so. He's healthy. So uh, heading in that direction of being 100% ready to go. Uh, when I say we should have just about everybody, again, we've got to get to practice today, but uh, that's Dre Brown. I think that's just about everybody should be fairly close to being ready to go. What, what was your focus of practice in the last week and the off week versus this week? Yeah, as a, as a general rule, uh, bye weeks about self-evaluation. Um, we moved on to our next opponent, to Nebraska, you know, late, but especially with the mill part of the game. But early on, more training camp type practices, fundamental work, as much as anything is what we're trying to clean up. Also, uh, getting healthy. It's a time to, you know, take a little bit of time. I'll let the body heal up a little bit too. That's the standard way that we handle the body. What do you feel like you've learned about the team? You know, you talk about the importance heading into the Big Ten play, just identity wise, or, you know, how you define it. Well, I think what we've learned is that we could be a pretty good football team. Um, you know, of course, the goal was to win all three of our games, uh, especially the first two games. Uh, you know, first game, uh, had to come back, you know, to win it. At the end, had to make plays, had to finish it the right way. Second game, we were able to get off to a faster start. Uh, to see a lot of young players, now we know, you know, have an idea what they can do in a game situation. And now we need to see about coming back, how we come back from a, from a big loss, uh, a, a game that we didn't play our best football. Uh, a game where, you know, of course, we can play a lot better than that. So, and again, everything is set up. It's by Big Ten play for us. And we have an opportunity, a big opportunity to hit Lovey, with all the new players that you've had played so far this year, what have you learned from your team through their first three games? I, I mean, that, that, that's... I mean, a lot of things. I mean, when you're playing for the first time, I mean, it's from A to Z, you know. First off, we, you know, got to go through a pregame routine with them. You know, what we do on game day, 
how you, how you go come out of the you know, from the hat, uh, and how you respond in situations when you're in a position to make plays as much as anything. Uh, mental part, but there's just a, a lot of things that we've learned. So it's hard to just say it. You know, we'll put a couple things there. It's just that our guys are growing up. Is what we've learned. And uh, of course, we're not talking a lot about freshman guys anymore. These are young players on our team that get better and better each rep they get. What did you see out of the quarterbacks during the bye week? You know, the same thing we've been seeing. I got to keep in mind, I mean, bye weeks, you know, we don't play, but we've been practicing throughout with the guys. It's not like we all of a sudden are going to see something that we haven't seen. But we want it, again, to use that time to get better in everything that we ask the guys to do. My guys show up to work each day. They do what they're asked to do. And they try to get better, and that's what we're doing. And uh, each week, we want to see improvement throughout in their entire game as much as anything. You mentioned the idea of self-evaluation, though. What, what do you want Chase to focus on this week for, for those improvements? I'm not trying to run away from your, your question, but I mean, self-evaluation is, is an entire game. There's just not one thing that we can say. There's a lot that goes into quarterback play. It's everything. Your preparation. You have three games. This is the routine you've gone through. How did that work for you? Is there something you need to tweak with it? Decision. It's always about decision making as a quarterback. Uh, option wise, when you give the ball, when you keep pass, when you let the ball go. There's just a lot of things that goes in. This overall play is what we're asking all of our players to do. It's just not one thing that you can say. And you just keep grinding daily with that. And that's what we're doing. And we hope to see improvement from the quarterback. Mike linebacker, cornerback, center, all of our positions, coaching, all the positions this week, we should see improve. You mentioned at the start that offensively it's about putting points on the board. What do you feel like you, know, you can do to kind of generate a little more offense tonight? Run our plays better. And guys, I believe I'm trying to answer your question as best I can, but there's not just one. I wish I could just say, hey, let's do this. Everything, right? It's 11 guys doing their job the proper way, consistently, being consistently good at each play. It's what we're trying to do with every position on our football team. It's just that. And we think we are. And when there's something that you don't like that you've done, you practice it, you meet about it, and then you get to a position where you can play another game and you see how that practice has. Uh, has transitioned into the play of the game. That's what I think we're going to see this week. We'll go back to work today with that. Nebraska's obviously had some ups and downs already this season. What do you see out of them offensively and defensively? I see a commit offensively. I see a commitment to the run, um, and then that's what you expect from a Nebraska team. And there are more traditional runs. There's some you know read option type plays, uh, but we see a commitment to the run offensively. A quarterback. That's a little bit different than what they've had. I would say that he's more of a thrower than a traditional, you know, uh, athletic running quarterback. Uh, and defensively, it's the same type of approach you see. Good heart knows, you know, no guys that know what they're doing. You know, physical at the point of attack. That's what we're going to see on the defensive side. Return game-wise, they have two returners. You know, they've gotten played uh, from the return game except to win football games, too. Uh, from Lewis Dorsey, at his best of his three games so far, what do you see from him to make him successful against South Florida? Well, I think Lewis, everything you're looking for in a in a tight end, in a young tight end, he has. Um, now it's about it's just not about a wide inline blocker. I wouldn't say that's his strong suit, even though he can do it. But I think he's a good matchup in the passing game, whether it's spreading him out, just uh, in line, again a matchup with a linebacker and a. Uh, and a safe. He can catch the football. I think he's a weapon that we need to use more often. Jeff George Jr. got an opportunity in the second half. How, how have you seen him respond this week knowing he's got an opportunity? I think one thing you can say about Jeff is that he's he's consistent throughout. Um, whether he gets a lot of plays in, I mean a lot of practice reps or not, I think when he if he's called the phone, he's going to come into the football game and do what we ask him. We bring him in to throw the football, and I think he can throw it. 
He has confidence in his arm. Uh, and again, he's willing to let the ball go. So he's he's not a high, low guy. He's the same level each day. Uh, he does his job. He blends in with any part of our football team well. Good part of the team. Where do you see the biggest from last year? Well, you know, he's just really played one time in a tough situation. I think he came in and, and took the snap and threw some balls, you know, had a little bit of success while he was out there. So that's where he is. He hadn't played an awful lot uh, right now, but uh, Jeff has been our relief hitter. You bring a relief hitter in there when you need something a little bit different than what you've been getting. I think that's what he'll provide for us whenever and if we decide to use him in that form. That way. Is he still your relief hitter? I'm sorry. Is he still your relief hitter? Uh, I would say he came in in relief last week. Um, when you say relief hitter, we have quarterbacks on our team. Like we have a lot of players on our team. Uh, in that game, we asked Jeff to be our relief hitter. Yes, and that's what we've asked him. That's been his role since he's been here. Uh, we're not making any changes been made, anything like that. Tito Denebo is no longer on the roster. I mean, what's the situation? What happened? Well, uh, Tito, when you say he's no longer on the roster, uh, you know, there are times when guys, uh, some team rules uh, aren't exactly what they should be, and, and guys take a little break from time to time. And that's kind of where it is with Tito right now. Tito's still on our football team. Uh, I will say that. Coach, I wanted to ask you about your thoughts on everything that's happened this weekend as far as the kneeling or, you know, teams staying in the locker room for the NFL. Just your thoughts and how would you handle that situation? I mean, a lot of thoughts go, uh, will actually go into where we're at right now. Uh, I mean, I, I think, you know, there's guys taking a stand against what they feel is right in our country. Uh, things said about private citizens, uh, just our president as a whole. I mean, is our president a role model? I'm asking you. I think we would all say yes. So I think there's certain things you expect him to say and certain things you don't expect him to do. What has happened right now has kind of brought a lot of people together. Uh, a way to voice your opinion on what you think is right and wrong is, is through the vote. I voted for a certain person because I believe in what they stood for. The presidency of our, our United States, I think there's a certain level of, of respect and just how you you assume that position, you know, would behave in every situation. And that's not the case right now. But there's many people who feel like they need to take a stand against it, something wrong. But, you know, for me, my opinions haven't changed an awful lot. Uh, on why I voted for a certain person and what we're talking about right now. Uh, we coach, we coach, I coach college students here. And we teach them that if you have an opinion, you say it. If there's something you don't like, be educated in what you say and voice your opinion at all times. Constitutionally, we have a right to do that. So I think that covers an awful lot about what we're going, what's going on right now. Well, well, for us, we talk about current things always. And to me, on what's happening right now, that change our program for what we do. What I've told Shannon and our players, again, I'm going to go back to the election. We want you to be involved in everything that's happening in your community, in your country, period. Be educated about it, have the information, and then make your, your voice known. That's what we tell all of our students. They have an opinion. Use your opinion at all times. Have we talked about this incident? No. I mean, we we're on bye week. I mean, I haven't talked with our football team since last Wednesday, per se. But we talk about current events always. And again, I don't think I have to change up what I tell our team right now. Uh, if you have an opinion, speak for you, all right, at any time. You don't have to do that doing a game.
you can do it at any time. Today you're going to talk to our athletes. They can give you their opinion at any time on what they feel. That's what I tell our football team always. Love you. When you're in front of a camera, or when when you're in front of a group of cameras, or on the field, uh, are you still conscious conscious of uh, modeling the behaviors that you want to see in others, or is it just Absolutely. so familiar now? Absolutely, I am. And that's why I say some of us are role models. Do we hold our athletes? Do we say that our athletes are role models? Do you expect them to behave a certain way? Any leader, I think, you would say yes. And I think that's how we, we should all be judged by that same standard. Every last one. Are we? Are you holding our leaders to that? I'm asking you. Are you? I mean, is it okay for, <coughs> for someone to, to call a, a, another American those names? Is it okay? I'm asking you. Is it? Is that okay? Is that what we believe? If it is, I guess, make your opinion known. To me, it's not. Other question? I guess, from my understanding, it's pre-game, just the timing where a team's not out for the national anthem. Has the players ever discussed, you know, wanting to be out there for any, I mean, any reason? No. This, we don't come out before. So we're not going to change up what we do. We have the same opinion. Again, what's happening right now doesn't dictate how we do things. We don't come out before. Uh, we're not going to now. But our guys all have opinions about what's going on. To be clear, you, you not coming out is not a statement. It's just how your pregame routine goes. This is how we've been doing it all along. Yeah. Should we change it up now? No, this is how we do it. You want to know our opinion? We, we give you our opinion. I think what's, what's happening right now is wrong, like everybody else. I would assume everybody in the room. Does anybody in the room ask you? Does anybody in the room, do you like what's happening right now? If you do, make it known. Just declare what you like and, and then go that way. Fair enough? I don't hear anybody say anything. I, I don't. Fair enough. Another question. Love, you were out on the road recruiting. Last week, um, you were specifically. Did, did you see our bus or something? I did. <laughs> you were specifically in the St. Louis area. That very important to you. Just how, how is that going and how was the week for you? I mean, recruiting is going. I mean, we have a great university. I believe in it. I think others should have my same belief on that. Uh, St. Louis area, of course, is close. We have uh, two freshmen starting from St. Louis right now, another that plays. It's an area that we need to do well in. There's great high school football down there, so we'll be recruiting that area. We've done it in the past. It's a strong effort for us to do well in that recruiting area right now. So it's going okay. Uh, to be able, that's why, to me, it's important for us to play, uh, you know, and it'd be televised nationally for other people to see, you know, what this young football team is doing. A great chance to make a statement this week. What is the reaction to the bus? Um, the bus was a star. You know, when you're a star, you people want to take pictures with the star, right? So uh, it, it gets your attention as much as anything. Uh, we don't like to just blend in. White sometimes, but orange is good from time to time, too. Coach, we have <coughs> questions for the phone lines for uh, Lovey Smith. Yeah, I've got one, Coach. This is uh, Paul Banks, the Sports Bank that night. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts on your good friend Charles Tillman going to join the FBI. That news came out last week, and how do you think uh, Peanut's going to do in his new career? Well, Peanut has always had an interest in law enforcement. Uh, I know from you know from our time together, we share a common you know a common uh, like as far as, as that is concerned. So it's not a surprise. Uh, I know Peanut has a variety of interests uh, that's important to him right now. So I know he'll do well with it, but it wasn't a shock to me at all by anything. Thanks, thanks Coach. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All right. All right.